Tonight, on the John Ankerberg Show, you will hear representatives of the Baha'i faith and the Christian faith discuss what are the truth claims of their respective beliefs and what is the evidence for those claims. Our first guest representing the Baha'i faith is Mrs. Mary Kay Radper, a member of the Baha'i Spiritual Assemblies in Atlanta, Baltimore County, and chairman of the Chattanooga Assembly. She is a frequent lecturer and teacher at Baha'i schools nationwide and has served as trainer and seminar leader for the National Assembly of the Baha'is of the United States. Our second guest is Mr. James Mock. He is a national representative of the Baha'i faith from the Baha'i National Center of Wilmette, Illinois. Our third guest, representing Orthodox Christian belief, is Dr. Walter Martin, author of the well-known Kingdom of the Cults and director of the Christian Research Institute. We invite you to listen to the evidence during this next half hour. Welcome. We're talking with representatives of the Baha'i Faith and uh, representative of Christianity, Dr. Walter Martin. And we're going to jump right to the topic that we left off last week. We were talking about, is Jesus, does he give us evidence that supports his claims, and does the prophet, Baha'u'llah, give us evidence that would support the things that you're saying for him? And Jim, you said you wanted to lead off this week, so please take the floor. Hey, John, I'd like to take up where we left off last week, in which we were talking about a decree made by Artaxerxes, okay. which we believe is one of the fulfillments of Christ's three major prophecies about his return. And Dr. Martin was saying that, indeed, this has been redated. Well, I'd like to add that if it's been redated, it changes the prophecy of the coming of Christ. How does that do so? Because chapter 9 of Daniel, it says that there are an appointed 70 weeks upon thy people. And it goes on to say that, and the Messiah shall be cut off. Well, 70 weeks is 490 days. If you take a day as a year in Bible prophecy, that's 490 years. 457, which is the day we believe that that decree was made, subtracted from 490, give 33, the approximate date, age that Christ was believed to be when he was crucified. So if you change the Baha'i, the date for the Baha'i prophecy, you're also changing Christian prophecy. This is the kind of reasoning that we simply have to deal with. The man has not read the archaeological data. He has admittedly not studied what the latest dating is on it. He does not know that in McDowell's book there is a perfect reconciliation on archaeological data for the advent of Jesus Christ. And so you are saying that either we buy 457 or we junk Christianity. And I'm saying no, that's I'm nonsense. Saying that. you, how, you know Pure that nonsense, we believe in sir. Jesus. You know that we believe. How, we would never say junk Christianity. No, you, you don't, you I don't. know that the Lord can. No, no, what you're saying, of course you do. You're a, you're a Southern Baptist that apostatized. <laughs> you're into Baha'ism because you turned your back on the historic gospel of Jesus Christ. You can sit here and quote scripture to me and quote biblical theology to me, which you have repudiated to join a Persian cult. I've not repudiated anything and I think you better you better look at the definition of a cult what is I a have, cult? I have a cult or yeah. James yeah. Jones's and groups like this that run off and isolate themselves the Baha'i faith is a world religion that ex that is every country of the world and it well, is a I growing think cults religion are a little more complex than the way you just put it out I mean just because they people isolate themselves doesn't make them a cult what makes you a cult is if you profess to be a follower of Christianity or in harmony with Christianity, and then you go about imitating the language and denying Christ. Well, I, don't, I disagree. I don't think the Muslims or the Zoroastrians or the Jewish people would define it that way. I think you are sort of self-centering the idea of a cult. I think we, the important point is that the, the religion, God sent his son to save mankind, to Who save is that the son? individual. Who is that son? Jesus Christ. Not Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah is the return. The I, know, the I want you to, I want to get the, t the facts right now. You keep saying the Son of God, and in your vocabulary, that is Baha'u'llah. You, you're still missing the point. We do no, not I'm disagree. I'm on the point. I want you to confirm it. Well, let me state, let me state this again to see if you, if you understand it. We believe that there is no difference between Jesus Christ and Baha'u'llah. Okay, accept that. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I understand perfectly. Okay, so if I'm saying that, that means that we believe in Christ and his, his return. But it, if it hinges on, it hinges on whether or not Baha'u'llah fulfills the biblical criterion. He doesn't fulfill it because Jesus said when he came back again, you would be able to identify him. Baha'u'llah simply proclaims that there's no identification. Jesus the Christ... His identity is the same. If you go outside on Monday and then you go outside on, on Tuesday. 
Will you say that the sun that rose Monday is a different sun than the sun that rose Tuesday because it has a different name? It doesn't. It's I, the same sun. It appears at a different point on the horizon. But that the, is the Baha'i lesson. But what if the moon came up? And if I said I felt like the sun was really there, but I'm looking at the moon. That's the reason for proofs. That's the reason that's, why these okay. questions are very important. Yes. No Baha'i would ever deny it. That's why we're here. Okay, well, you we're see, talking... We don't, say, we're, we don't want to say casually that the question of the scriptures is something to, to ignore or that the personage of Christ and, and the loyalty that, you're, that a you're Christian that has to, to Christ ignored. is something that is just nothing to be yeah. concerned about. But the proof of Christianity, if you look back on all of that uh, from the point of view of a Baha'i, was not that the miracles that Christ performed. It was a miracle that he performed by bringing Roman, Phoenician, Greek, uh, North African, uh, you, all these European. He brought people together in a way that they had never been brought together before. That same miracle is occurring today when the Baha'i faith is touching everybody in the entire planet, in so, Africa, in Europe. Hey, Dr. Martin. But you have a fundamental disagreement with the Lord Jesus at this point. He said that he came into the world to save sinners. He said he came into the world to redeem us from our sins once for all. He appears at the fullness of time, at the end of time, to redeem mankind. Now, you are saying that Baha Allah is indeed this same Jesus who died previously. No, we're not saying that it is the physical Jesus of Nazareth spirit. born. The spirit is the we're saying that the Christ spirit, which was reflected perfectly in the Christ, uh -huh. is the same spirit which is manifested in Baha Allah. We say In Zoroaster too? In Zoroaster too, Baha'is Baha believe in we explain, for instance, the concept of the Trinity in this way. We say that God is like the sun. Of course, it's an analogy because God is not the sun, but God is like the sun. The manifestations of God are like mirrors. When you hold them up and the sun is reflected in them, you say, there is the sun. You're absolutely right. That is the sun. Okay, and but that's the Mary, do you, do you, when you read a verse like Colossians 2 where it says that in Christ dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and it doesn't say in any shape or form their reflection, it's talking about the essence of That's God right, is in Jesus. Because at that okay. time in human history when the Christ appeared okay. in all the fullest way, the mm. way he walked, the way he talked, everything was the perfect manifestation of the attributes of God. We simply say that that same phenomenon has occurred more than once in human history but, and that the millions of souls okay. in the world we agree with you up to a point. Christ. We agree with you up to the point, except we're saying that, that God was in Christ, period. Okay. That he wasn't really a reflection like a, a mirror, but you were seeing God in flesh. But let's John, get to Zoroaster. But John, let That's me ask very you, important, John. I've got to ask John a question. See, I, I, first of all, a comment is that I think we're going off into things that aren't the key points yeah. of religion. I'm trying to get back to the point of salvation, human spiritual development and eternal life. But we are talking about other things that I think are irrelevant in this. Okay, Jim, I think, let, let's put it in a me... proper perspective. I think the reason why we're talking about it is if we're going to put our eternal destiny into the hands of Jesus or Baha uh, 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 Allah, Allah, okay, if we're going to put our hands, uh, or put our fate into his hands, we have to know what we're getting into. I know that Jesus died, rose again, and he's living right now, and that's pretty solid proof. I know that uh, the prophet is dead. And I don't see why you, I should switch allegiance at that point. You, see, you're, you're still not making that connection of the sameness. You don't see Jesus walking around here. You know he's alive in the spirit. Baha'u'llah is the same. No, he's alive in his body, which Baha'ism denies. That's the whole point. Okay, Christianity, me, you know as full well as you're sitting in that chair, that Christianity from your Baptist background teaches that when Jesus Christ came out of the grave, he came out in the same form that hung on the cross. He presented his body to his disciples. Put your finger into my hand, your hand into my side. Don't be without faith. Believe. Now, that is the historic Jesus Christ. That is not Baha'u'llah. You are denying the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let me add, if you read in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says that it is, speaking of the body, it is sown a natural body. It has raised a spiritual body. I'm glad you quoted that verse. That's Good, a Jehovah's Witness argument, and it should be answered. It's in the Bible. Uh, it's a Jehovah's Witness <laughs> argument. It should be answered, okay? How much Greek did you have when you were studying for the ministry? Irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It is very relevant, because the word body there is pneumatika soma, which means a spiritual body.